Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I am good. Welcome back, everybody. We apologize for uh, missing last week, but we're on a little bit of a new adventure with Horse Center, so uh, bear with us and or enjoy the new system. It's a new system. No, uh, no, it's Matt. It's just you and I, so no one to blame if things go horribly wrong. But I don't think they will, Matt. We know what we're doing here. And of course, today we're going to talk about a big card at Fairgrounds, Matt. There's six stakes at Fairgrounds on Saturday, four of them graded. The two we're going to focus on, though, have Kentucky Derby and Kentucky Oaks implications. And I think pretty big, frankly, especially Kentucky Derby implications, because this risen star that we're going to talk about is a loaded race, Matt. I think we have to start with the horse that we both think will be favored, and that is Smile Happy. Yeah, best field, I think, of a Kentucky Derby prep uh, uh, thus far, ex excluding maybe the Breeders' Cup. But this field may be even better than the uh, Breeders' Cup. It's the Risen Star. It's a mile and an eighth. So the first, well, the second Derby prep that's got a mile and an eighth to go along with the Remsen. Big purse, $400,000. Smile happy. I agree, Brian, we think is going to be the favorite. The question is, how big a favorite? Will smile end up smile happy end up being after closing as the favorite individual betting interest in last weekend's third Kentucky Derby future pool? Yeah, that's right, Matt. He was the he was the horse that uh, was chosen as the favorite. A, a uh, uh, other than all the other horses, of course, that option is still a pretty clear favorite. The all button. But uh, a smile happy, you know, two for two. He looked really good at Keeneland, uh, winning uh, uh, his debut, a maiden, which came at two turns, which he just rolled by the field in the stretch effortlessly. And then he went to the Kentucky Jockey Club, Matt. And uh, it was a big performance because uh, 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 visually it was a big performance. He rolled right by just pretty much as easily as he did in the maiden race. But uh, as we've learned, the horses that are coming out of that Kentucky Jockey Club that were beaten easily by Smile Happy are doing pretty darn well. Yeah, we got to talk about that fa the fact that uh, that Kentucky Jockey Club is a very, very legitimate key race. And and if you, there are some relatively new people on Horse Center who don't know what a key race is, it's a race where horses come back and run very well and or win their next race. And that was the Kentucky Jockey Club where Smile Happy beat uh, uh, Classic Causeway, who just came back and won the Sam F. Davis. And in third place in there was White Abario, who a couple weekends ago was an extremely impressive winner of the Holy Bull. And farther back in the field was Call Me Midnight, who won the LeCompte. So uh, Smile Happy gets flattered, which means uh, he's got a lot of class because he's bit, beaten all of these return winners. Yeah, three graded stakes winners have come out of that Kentucky Jockey Club already. Now, Matt, it was almost three months ago, but it was a big performance, as we said, in his second career start. He's two for two. Trained by Kenny McPeak, the son of Run Happy. Couldn't have looked much better in those two races. Let's take a look back at that Kentucky Jockey Club, which was late November at uh, a fairgrounds and a very impressive performance. Causeway comes on three wide. Smile Happy comes on four wide. Right in behind is White DeBario begging for racing room. Vivar's trying to catch up two with Call Midnight. There's one for long to go. Smile Happy strikes the front of the eighth pole. Smile Happy comes away with the lead. Classic Causeway tries to go with him. Ben Diesel gives it up late. White DeBario howling time. But Smile Happy has kicked it into high gear. And Smile Happy with a powerful performance wins by two and a half. Classic Causeway settles for a second. White DeBario. All right, Matt, that was the Kentucky Jockey Club late last November. Smile Happy deserves to be the favorite. On this morning line, we have the morning line straight from Fairgrounds here uh, on the Risen Star. And he is just a slight favorite, 7 to 2. They actually have five horses between 7 to 2 and 9 to 2. And I kind of get it because all five are accomplished, good looking 
a stakes winner's map, but I, I have a feeling Smile Happy might be just a little bit lower, or at least there will be more separation between him and the rest of this field. But uh, he is just one of three graded stakes horses coming in from out of town for this Risen Star. Uh, let's go to Slow Down Andy next, who's 9-2 to two on the morning line. Those seem like great odds considering what he is coming off doing recently out west. Yeah, and we can talk. We can say some of the similar things about Slow Down Andy that we said about Smile Happy in terms of their last race and who they beat in there. I wouldn't call the Low South Futurity a key race at this point, but certainly a flattering race for Slow Down Andy, who uh, you'll will show you the replay shortly, who beat Messier. And as we know, a couple weekends ago, Messier came back and just absolutely smoked the field in the Robert B. Lewis. Yeah, Messier came back uh, with a huge performance last time at Santa Anita. That's for sure that uh, Bob Baffert trained empire maker kind of zoomed up. If he is going to be somehow eligible for the Kentucky Derby, he zoomed up the Kentucky Derby rankings with that big performance out there at Santa Anita. And that was the next race after being beaten by Slow Down Andy last time uh, in the Low South Futurity. There, there's a lot I like about Slow Down Andy. Uh, of course, trainer Doug O'Neill has won two Kentucky Derbies already. And uh, this son of Nyquist, a, a Kentucky Derby winner himself, uh, has run at three different tracks, Matt. I, I like all three races that he's run. And uh, now he gets the 10 hole here in the Risen Star. He's got some tactical speed. He's not a speed horse per se, but he's a horse that can get uh, uh, near the lead early and, and then maybe get that good position on the outside. But uh, certainly look good out in California. Why don't we take a look at that race that we've been talking about, the Los Alamitos Futurity, which was in mid-December last year, and it boiled down to a two-horse race, Matt. From Durante, Durante and Messier, Messier with a length and a half, the Rossa slow, slow down Andy. Andy. Circling, Circling past, past the three eighths pole into, into the far turn, turn and Durante, Durante and, Messier and Messier have gone on with it together. together. Slow, slow down, down Andy, Andy staking his claim three, three wide, the Rossa being, being stoked up four wide, wide and Olympic and legend has given way. Four abreast as they swing for home, it's Messier, slow down Andy, the Rossa dropping off. So is so Durante, Durante on the inside, inside and slow down Andy's, Andy's gone, gone to a narrow lead. lead. Messier, Messier is skating on thin ice. They're getting, They're getting very tight. tight. They brush there. there. Messier's Messier fighting back on the inside, the regaining a narrow lead from slow down Andy. Andy. The lead seesawing a 16th to go. Slow down Andy has his neck in front again. Slow down Andy's pulling away. Slow down Andy has won the low sound futurity over Messier's six lanes clear. Durante and Messier with a length and a half for Rossa slow down Andy. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Our first production issue on our, <laughs> on, on our new system, Matt. That, that toggle got me that time. Hey, uh, it's good-looking chestnut. Like I said, I like all three races, which were at three different tracks. Of course, now he leaves Southern California. All of those three tracks were in Southern California and, and comes east, which can be uh, sometimes difficult for horses to do at their very best. But uh, the fact that he's run three good races at three different tracks uh, has me thinking that he is a very good horse. And that low South Futurity was a fast time, but you look at what Messier did after, and you'd have to say, slow down Andy is a real contender here. Yeah, and you have to give Doug, Doug O'Neill a little bit of credit here. Uh, he he said that the reason that uh, slow down Andy is going to the Risen Star is to exactly get the experience of making a long ship. Maybe this involves a plane flight, um, et cetera as opposed to hopping in a van to, to go to one of the other uh, Southern California tracks. Yeah, and I certainly trust uh, the ability of Doug O'Neill to get a horse ready for the Kentucky Derby. He's already proven that. Now, let's look at uh, the last big shipper, as, I'm, uh, as I see it. He also 9-2 on the morning line. His name is Zandon, and, and Zandon's like uh, a Smile Happy, has only had two races. But uh, he, he impressed in those two races. At least he impressed me. Trained by Chad Brown, the son of Upstart, comes from New York. Yeah, and he was a maiden special weight winner in a six furlong sprint and then moved from there in fairly, you know, short time to the Remsen going nine furlongs. That's not easy to do with any horse, a young horse or an old horse, but Chad Brown certainly excels in that kind of move. And hey, I, I you know, Zandon was impressive in that Remsen with if 
folks remember that controversial stretch battle with Zandon and Mo Donegal when uh, Zandon certainly took the worst of Irad Ortiz's uh, rough riding techniques uh, uh, and and where there was a long inquiry, nothing was changed, but uh, Zandon now has shown the ability to battle and go the nine furlongs. I expect that he is going to like the extra distance uh, the, the the nine furlongs again in the Risen Star and the long stretch run. Yeah, yeah. No more distance for Zandana. He's the only horse in the race who's been nine furlongs, and that's something. A lot of these horses have been eight and a half furlongs uh, so far. But, of course, he's the only one in the race with nine furlongs. So that's that's an advantage, even though he's lightly raced. Going from that, like you said, going from that six furlong maiden win at Belmont, where he won nicely, to the nine furlong Rumson was not easy. The horse that uh, beat him by a nose in a roughly run stretch where Zandon was coming back at him on the rail uh, is Mo Donegal. And I thought Mo Donegal returned with a really sneaky good performance recently in the Holy Bowl. So uh, there's a lot to like with Zandon as well, Matt. As there are, we still have two more, I think, main principles in here. In fact, if you look at the morning line odds, they're the second and third coach who Co-second choices, I guess, on four to one. I think Papa Cap has to be a little bit higher. He's my fifth choice personally, uh, and Epicenter there at four to one as well. Matt, they uh, they ran a uh, a good race last time against each other for the first time in the Lecompte, but neither one won the race. Yeah, if we want to start with uh, Epicenter, Epicenter uh, is a horse that prefers to race on the lead, or certainly absolutely pressing the pace and and in that Lecomte he had the lead going down the stretch only to to give it up at the end to call we call me midnight who we mentioned uh, earlier and frankly Brian the pace scenario in this uh, risen star looks like epicenter should have the opportunity to get to the lead again there is there are not many horses that really seem like they are go to the lead types maybe some that like to be close um, but uh, with Epicenter, uh, I, I think I have a little bit of question about uh, the extra distance, that extra 16th of a mile. Yeah, I agree with you, Matt. I, I think he is the speed of the race. However, there, there are some horses that I would expect to show speed in here. Um, and, and then there are horses that I think want to be laying close. Maybe Papa Cap tries to lay a little bit closer than last time. You know, Papa Cap down on the rail again. But Epicenter looks like the horse who should be out there on the lead. And, uh, you know, that's always dangerous, even at nine furlongs. I'm not sure if he got caught at a mile of 16th. Now he faces a tougher field at a mile and an eighth here in the Risen Star, if that's going to be great news for Epicenter. But you got to respect the speed. And Epicenter has been uh, uh, really moved forward in his last three races after uh, fading away in his debut. So he's two for four. Trainer Steve Asmussen, a son of not this time. We're seeing a ton of not this times now right behind Gunrunner as the top young sire in the country. So Epicenter, a big threat. Papa Cap, meanwhile, hasn't won recently, Matt, but uh, Papa Cap has been a very good horse in graded stakes now. He's been in five straight graded stakes. We remember him, of course, from last year, but he also ran a good race in the Lecomte. Yes, and, and Papa Cap's career has been consistent. He comes into the race as the leading money winner. He comes into the race with 14 derby points already, won the first two races of his career, including a stake out in California, and then has just been right there in grade one, grade twos. That includes the Breeders' Cup, uh, Breeders Cup Juvenile. But um, as you mentioned, Brian, he's back on the rail again in this risen star yeah I, I i don't know that i've ever loved a trip since he won that grade two best pal uh last summer uh he won his first two races he debuted in florida it just seems like he's getting beat in in these last four races with trips that i i, I never seem to love and and now drawing the rail in this uh what do, we, what do we have 10 horses in the risen star I think there's a question mark whether he'll get the best trip. He could. He could on the rail. He could stalk on the rail and find room, and and he could be one of the horses to beat. We know he's got class second, like I said, second in two grade one races to Corniche last uh, fall out in California, including that Breeders' Cup. So Papa Cap, another big threat in here, and he was uh, not beaten by much by either Epicenter or the winner, called me midnight last time in his first try over the track. 
at fairgrounds. And as, as, as a son of a gun runner, I wouldn't think the nine furlongs would be any trouble for Papa Cap, Matt. Yeah, agreed. I think the distance will not be an issue and, and certainly a horse that uh, you have to consider if you're, if you're playing trifectas, exactas and such. Um, and, and I, I think clearly he's going to be uh, a third, fourth choice or so in this field. Yeah, I, I, I'm going to say he's the fifth choice, Matt, with the four other horses ahead of him. So uh, I, I, I look for Papa Cap to have some much better odds than the four to one, even morning line there. Fifth choice for me. And then after these five big horses that are all in everybody's top 10 or top 20 of the Kentucky Derby, uh, early early thoughts and early rankings, Matt, you got some interesting other ones. Brad Cox has a couple uh, of undefeated horses in here in Tawny Port and Bodock. Yeah, two horses that are two for two. One of them won both of the races on the synthetic surfaces at uh, Turfway Park. Both of them clearly are horses that have some talent. For me, I think maybe later on uh, in the year we'll see good things for them. But their two races um, came up uh, slower and certainly against less challenge challenging company than those than those top five that we talked about. Yeah, I think I think both of them have some potential to be good. I'm interested in Tawny Port, a son of Pioneer of the Nile, as you say, coming from a synthetic surface, though at Turfway Park in his two wins. Uh, but uh, they, they found a tough spot. All, all, all these other horses have found a tough spot with all these uh, top five graded stakes horses that we're talking about. I could say the same about the Pletcher runner. Uh, a pioneer of Medina, who's getting better. He's won his last two. Uh, he's two for four now, but another son of Pioneer of the Nile who looked good over the track at Fairgrounds. Trafalgar gets blinkers for Alstall Jr. after running a decent race in the Le Comte. You know, he was fourth, but uh, uh, not a bad effort. If he can improve a little with blinkers, he's another one. But I think it comes down to the top five, my friend. I I'm going to ask you now for your top pick here in this excellent edition of the Risen Star. Yeah, it is a really good addition. Not just those top five, but you know, there there are there are very very few horses in this field that you look at and say, oh, they, they have no right being in the race. Um, uh, I, I like Smile Happy Brian. I, I that that key race uh, in the Kentucky Jockey Club just says to me that uh, uh, Smile Happy has got class. The question is going to be, and and is with all of these horses, moving from two-year-old to three-year-old, how much of a step forward will they make? I expect Smile Happy to do that. Um, I do have some question marks with trainer Kenny McPeak, uh, uh, having keeping these kind of horses going when it when they get onto the Derby Trail. All that being said, I'm going to go with Smile Happy as my top pick. Yeah, and I can't blame you a bit, Matt. He looked fantastic in those two races uh, last year as a two-year-old. I do worry uh, he's a come-from-behind horse, and I think he might be farther back than he ever has with this uh, deep and talented field in the Risen Star and the fact that he hasn't run in just about three months. So as the favorite, I'm going to try to beat him, but I, I'm not really going out on a big limb because he was one of the top two on my Kentucky Derby rankings, as is Slow Down Andy. And Slow Down Andy's in the race. I just feel like he might be in a better position early in the race uh out of that uh, 10 hole i think he can stalk from the outside make a good run and and i, I and i i'm going to call the los alfiturity a key race already because messier the horse he beat there came back with such a big performance last time out in california so slow down andy will be my top pick matt in this excellent kentucky derby prep hey uh, it, it occurs to me that uh, fairgrounds on this day, Saturday, is ra is naming these races after some of my all-time favorites. Uh, first, we have Risen Star. Now we have Rachel Alexander. There's another race called the Mine Shaft. So horses I loved are, are, are uh, taking the names of these races. Let's jump right to that Rachel Alexander map, which should be a key prep for the Kentucky Oaks. Uh, this one's only a mile and 16th, a little shorter than the Risen Star, $300,000 grade two. And uh, if you look at our HRN odds uh, that we set, Matt, it is very different from the morning line. I was absolutely shocked to see that LaCrit, the well-bred Stone Street Philly, is 8 to 1 on the morning line. I, I don't quite understand it. We have her as the favorite. I think we're right, but, but 
let's talk a little bit more about Lacrete. Yeah, I agree. I was shocked that not only Lacrete eight to one, North County was also eight to one, and and I I, I think North County had legitimately might be the second choice. Um, but yeah, that 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 those morning light odds were crazy. Lots to say about Lacrete already. Uh, lots to be familiar with if we think back to last year's three-year-old Phillies and the wonderful Philly Clarier, who was trained by Steve Asmussen and raced in the Stone Street Silks, just like Lacrette, and the similarities don't end right end there. Those two Phillies are uh, half-sisters, both of them out of the wonderful grade one winner, Cavorting. Lacrette is by uh, Medagliadoro, which, which makes us think that with uh, her breeding, distance won't be any any problem. She won a wonderful silver bullet day, racing out on the front end, winning uh, a, a battle down the stretch. Um, so lots to like about Lacrette. Yeah, she was, uh, like you said, the breeding is impeccable. Cavorti, Medagliadoro. Medagliadoro has sired two of the best fillies of the 20, 20 uh, uh, second century here in Rachel Alexandra and Songbird. Lacrete, you know, long way to go before she's talked about like those two, but uh, looked really good in her debut performance. And then it was a, a very game performance. She went straight from that maiden debut win at Churchill Downs to uh, become a stakes winner last time, which was the silver bullet day, as you mentioned, Matt, at uh, uh, Fairgrounds over the track. Let's take a look at that win in the silver bullet day. It didn't look like she was going to win for much of the stretch, but she pulled it out. Candy Rain and his coming to his last as these Phillies creep in past the quarter pole. It's Fanny and Freddie, and Fanny and Freddie has rested a short lead from La Crette with a furlong and a half to go. Then toward the inside is Bernard Breezy, who's charging hard. Sweet as pie. Candy Rain and his Janita. They come past the 16th. It's a short lead for Fanny and Freddie from La Crette, who fights all the way down to the line. La Crette's come back. Back in front is La Crette. La Crette beats Fanny and Freddie in the all right matt there she was in the in the uh, silver bullet day in a game performance and she was coming back it, it looked it looks like she's got some heart it also looks like uh she will be fine as they go a little farther she doesn't need to go farther really here this is a mile 16th race as we talked about but i think lacrette uh drawn the rail uh joelle rosario riding i i think she's the one to beat here in this uh rachel alexandra yeah, and she already showed in that silver bullet day that she was comfortable on the inside, although she wasn't in tight quarters on the inside. But still, young horses uh, uh, don't necessarily always like being uh, being on the inside. So uh, uh, we'll see. Uh, it's a good field in the Rachel Alexandra. I don't think it's quite as deep as the Risen Star field. Yeah, absolutely. The horse right to her outside in this 11 horse field, Matt, you mentioned her already is North County. North County is a daughter of not this time, trained by Brendan Walsh. Uh, she is undefeated as well. She's actually three for three. She's done it on different surfaces, I guess, turf, slop, fast track. She's got a win over the track, a stakes win over the track as well, having won the untappable last time. So North County, uh, uh, another, big, uh, another big contender here in the Rachel Alexandra. Yeah, it's hard to find anything to pick at uh, with uh, with North County. That debut on the turf at uh, Indiana Grand. Um, some trainers, like you know Brandon Walsh, one of them, uh, like uh, to 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 give them their first start on the uh, on the turf. Then a nice allowance win at Keeneland. Now a third different track, and and you gotta like when they have a win over the the track they're running at in that untappable so uh uh north county again very impressive in all in all her races yeah and they actually beat the same philly uh in, in those two stakes races the untappable silver bullet they have the same philly ran second matt all right we're talking about uh the two stakes winners at fairgrounds but actually the morning line favorite is drawn far to the outside here in the rachel alexander her name of course is hidden connection Hidden Connection is a daughter of Connect, trained by Brett Calhoun. She had two impressive wins to start her career, including the grade three Pocahontas at uh, Churchill Downs, Matt. And then uh, 
Uh, they decided to send her out, at, and I don't blame them, they decided to send her out west to Del Mar for the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies. She didn't do a whole lot when she was a well-beaten fourth early November. We haven't seen her since. She drew the 11 hall, but she is the morning line favorite. Yeah, and here we go. Uh, you know, it, it's that scenario that did some good things as a two-year-old. You mentioned that Pocahontas um, at uh, Churchill that she won by nine lengths. So, uh, uh, and now a little bit of time off, coming back as a three-year-old. How is a uh, uh, hidden connection going to step forward? We'll find out. Uh, three to one on that fairgrounds morning line no way brian no way is this horse going to be three to one yeah yeah i think they'll be she'll be a little bit higher um like like we already said we think luck Crete will be the favorite after that we'll see but hidden connection certainly de deserves respect off of her two-year-old season uh another one that should get some money matt is awake at midnight she's another uh, uh nyquist the daughter of nyquist for doug o'neill just like uh slow down andy in the risen star and awake at midnight's just missed in a couple stakes uh, out on the West Coast. Most recently, she was a sharp second in the Santa Inez. Yeah, a debut winner uh, for uh, for Doug O'Neill out in California, and then he moved her on to, onto the turf in the in the Durante, a Grade Three, and then onto the the Santa Inez where she ran a good second. Shipping out of California, pro you know, probably on the same plane with uh, uh, with uh, with the horse from the Risen Star. Slow down, Andy. Yeah, that's right. Don't forget, don't forget my pick's name, Matt. Hey, yeah, she's coming out of Santa Inez, Santa Inez, which was seven furlongs, so she'll have to stretch out a little bit. She beat Miss Maddie B, and here Miss Maddie B is also making the trip. Miss Maddie B won on turf and showed some speed. Uh, there's other turf forces in here too, Matt. There's Turner Loose and California Angel, who were both stakes winners last uh, last year on the turf in Kentucky. Uh, Dreamlift uh, ended her year with a nice uh, uh, little upset win in the Goldenrod. She's another daughter of Madagliadoro. Uh, Divine Huntress, uh, trained by Grand Motion, looks pretty good coming from Parks, Matt. There's, there's a lot more options in here. Uh, go ahead and, and, and talk about the ones you're most interested in besides the favorites we've already mentioned. Yeah, Divine Huntress, interesting. Looks like uh, the current connections privately purchased um, Divine Huntress early on after uh, after a maiden score. And, uh, and then she came back for Graham Motion to win an allowance at Parks by 12. You know who she be beat in that kind of field. Who knows? But that was certainly, um, certainly an impressive performance. I like Turner Loose last year as a turf horse. I actually think Brian. And I don't know. You might remember also. I actually think that Turner Loose may have been my pick in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf. But there, you know, this is a tough, tough spot for both of them. Yeah, yeah, uh, California Angel, all of them, it's a tough spot, just like the Risen Star. Uh, Turner Loose, I know you did like her last year. She's got a lot of speed for Brad Cox, and she's bred to handle the dirt, but this is actually her first dirt race, so we'll see if Turner Loose is going to uh, excel on the dirt here in the Rachel Alexandra. So, Matt, a lot of, a lot of choices, a lot of good fillies, just like the Risen Star, maybe not quite the uh, superstars that we were talking about in the Risen Star, but uh, I could see a lot of these Phillies getting good and being real Kentucky Oaks uh, threats in a, in a few months. Who's your top pick in the Rachel Alexandra? That's a tough one, Brian, uh, to, to 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 pick in here. But I'm like what I saw uh, from the races for for North County, the progression from turf, and then uh, uh, running on the slop, and then a win on the in the untappable at fairgrounds i'm going to go with north county because i think the odds are going to be a little bit more attractive yeah i agree with you i, I didn't expect you to say north county but i am on north county as well uh yeah she could be the second choice but she could be the fourth choice in here i, I think she's still a little disrespected despite that three for three record she's done nothing wrong i like the way she finishes off her races she clearly likes to win races for trainer Brendan Walsh. And until she gets beat, I'm going to bet her too. And, and maybe she will drift up to five, six to one, uh, maybe even eight to one as they have her on the morning line here 
in the Rachel Alexander. We'll see about that. All right, Matt, our first time with no producer. We did it ourselves. I think we got through it pretty well. I hope everybody's still with us. If you are, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel here at Horse Racing Nation. We sure do appreciate it. Matt, can I get a closing shot from you, my friend? Yeah, Brian, I think it went uh, pretty well. And, and I hope uh, everybody has a good weekend betting the big races at fairgrounds. I think you will expect... Uh, Horse Center in the future to come out on a more regular, timely kind of schedule. Yeah, well, we missed a week without a producer last week, but uh, yeah, we're, we're going to come back on a more regular schedule. You're right, Matt. We uh, we sure do appreciate our sponsor, Derby Wars, but more than that, we appreciate you folks tuning in every week to watch Horse Center. Uh, we got Kentucky Oaks rankings. We got Kentucky Derby rankings. We got the Rebel next week. We got the Saudi Cup. So we really can't miss any more weeks coming up, Matt Schiffman, right here on Horse Center. Folks, we will see you next time. Enjoy the show.